everybody. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Andrew. How are you? I'm doing well. Oh, it good. is sunny and beautiful in Columbus, Ohio today, so I'm a happy camper. Oh, that's great. And we're not on fire in California, which is uh, actually that's probably not true because I did <laughs> see that there was something trending on Twitter earlier that there's a fire in Humboldt. So maybe there, maybe we are on fire. Who knows? Um, welcome I to the chat. You need to grab a bucket and go put it out. Yeah, Sorry. I've got I've got my reserve right here. Um, <laughs> hi everyone in chat. Lots of fun people. Uh, we have Natasha, Raphael, um, PM, and I, I think the greatest name I've ever seen in chat. Um, Festus, Steve Festus, Steve Festus Casaboom. Casaboom is such a great last name. Um, it is a great last name. Oh, greetings from Bolivia. Friends in Bolivia. Uh, saying hi mona quinn um awesome well thanks for hanging out and joining us everyone um today we will be actually jeremy do you want to tell people what we'll be doing today and then i can do all the weird housekeeping stuff we have to do <laughs> sure uh yeah so yesterday we went ahead and did the layout in illustrator for a uh, pouch for the aviator bird harness if you missed last uh, yesterday's, you'll be able to go back and, and catch up on it later. Um, but today we're going to basically take that art and I'm going to show you how to do uh, a, a simple Photoshop mockups of the of the pouch. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and start uh, laying out the corrugated box for another one of their products. Fun. Uh, hello from Maryland, says Jennifer. Whenever I hear Maryland, all that I think is Maryland, Massachusetts and good old Michigan. That's like anytime anyone says the word Maryland, it's immediately where my brain goes. Um, Straight cool. Back to elementary. It does. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we're going to hop in. We have a couple things to um, talk about before we hop into the stream. First of all, if you're on YouTube, thanks so much for watching. Thanks. Thanks for being on YouTube. Um, but again, like we said yesterday, you're standing outside the party looking in the window. The real party is happening on Behance. Uh, go to behance.net slash live um, and click into that chat. There is a very active chat here. Steve Festus Kossaboom is here. So, I mean, he's not in the YouTube chat. He's only exclusively making appearance here in Behance. So um, hop over to Behance. Join us in chat. Come say hello. Um, also... If you are a creative uh, that is looking to get involved um, or had applied to the creative residency, there's actually a great program that's going on right now, and I'll show you a little bit about it. Um, so it's called the Adobe Creative Residency and Community Fund, and what's happening is we've they've chosen uh, two people for creative residency, but then opened up a ton of funds for creatives in general, um, and a fund for them to pursue a project or to work on a collaboration with Adobe. So you can go uh, to this site and find out about uh, funded projects and add a proposal for your project to get funded or apply for an Adobe commission for anywhere from $500 to $5,000. So a way that Adobe is standing behind their idea of creativity for all um, and trying to support the creative community in a great way. So go check that out. Really great resource. Um, and if you're looking to maybe not uh, apply for funds, but you just want to learn some things, you can go to our daily creative challenges that are happening right now. Um, I believe that they just finished. A lot of you are probably coming over um, from the uh, daily creative challenge. And hello, Blessin. This is your first Behance live stream. Oh my goodness. Hello. Welcome. Um, so this one Welcome. is not quite a class. We're going to be learning things and walking through and learning from Jeremy. So I guess it's kind of a class. Um, but but this is for you, actually, what we're talking about right now is the daily creative challenges. Uh, you can go here and sign up for these. Um, this one is just wrapping up, and today they're doing 3D elements. Ooh, fun. Um, but this one is just wrapping up, um, but next Monday, you can – here, uh, Blessin – Come hang out on Monday with me, and I will be teaching you for two weeks um, on these daily creative challenges. So yes, you can take my class. How about that? Um, come on and hang out on Monday as we do those. You can get involved and post your work from the daily creative challenges at our bit.ly link. Jeremy, do you want to help me with my favorite part of the stream? It's right up right, here. Right there. Yeah. It's, yeah, this is the favorite part. Sorry. I'm really excited about your work, but I also am very excited about doing that yeah. with the like, yeah, let's, yeah, we hold it up and support it. Um, yeah, right there. Like our friends. Um, so in our community, um, so yes, go to bit.ly slash AI discord. This is a great place for you to get connected. Let's hop over into discord real quick and you can see, um, our friends, Jack and Laura are posting some feedback and that's what you do, um, in discord is you can post your work, you can get feedback and you can, uh, really 
get a great community out of this uh, place. So hop into Discord, join us. Um, and hello, Brad Smith, your neighbor here at Mount Rubido. Hello, I literally am right next door. So um, hi, I just got out my window. Hi, Brad. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I've never had anyone that's like close to me watching. That's fun. Um, cool. So that is what we're doing today. Let me see if we have anything else. Yes. Um, in the chat, our friend uh, Wade or Voodoo Val will be dropping a link to a survey that is currently going on about the daily creative challenges. So you can hop into that survey, um, give some feedback. Adobe loves your feedback. I loves the creative community and what you have to say. Um, but yeah, take that survey. And I think that's all we have. Jeremy, do you want to take it away and let's hop in? Do you want to talk a little bit about what we did yesterday? Sure. Yeah. Um, yesterday, I basically uh, shared a little bit about how I go through my process of creating, um, starting with a, a die line or a template that you get from a package manufacturer, and then how to take the branding that you've created for a project and integrate it, and then bring in the copy from your writer, et cetera, and kind of just like apply it to, uh, to that file. So that's what we can pick up today. Cool. Yeah. So yesterday it was uh, really cool to see your process go from sketch into this is like the geometric shapes we're using into we can take those shapes and apply them other places. And we ended with pretty much a final design for the package, right? Yeah, um, close. Let's yep. hop over and show you guys what that looks like. Um, so this is what we did yesterday. Oh, I can never point the right way. Floating above Jeremy. Um, this is what we did yesterday. We put all these pieces together. And Jeremy, do you have a sketch that we had pulled over yesterday so we can show people kind of where we came from? Uh, yes, I do. Let me grab that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and this is uh, in the wise words of Drake. I want to show you guys that we started from the bottom and now we're here. Um, in those wise, wise words. Uh, hello, Doc is here. Um, and hey, Desiree, Doc. you just finished yesterday's video. Well, welcome to today's video. Great, good timing. There we go. Uh, yeah, so that's the sketch that we started at, um, started at the bottom, and now we're here. Um, yeah. And it's really cool to see, like we said, that you're incorporating those simple shapes, the geometricness from your logos, from the explorations you had into what is now a final package. Yeah, yeah. So this is the basically a layout that's just about ready to go to print. Um, and you'll notice I cleaned it up a little bit since yesterday. Uh, the, those giant uh, shapes aren't floating out here anymore. I kind of trimmed them in a little bit to kind of fit fit a little bit better. But you'll see that I do have my bleeds all set and everything's going off the edge of the package nicely. So awesome. Um, and chat, let yeah. me know about the audio. We had some issues yesterday, so let me know if there's anything uh, today that I could make sound better for you. Um, if I can talk down here and that helps, uh, we'll do that for the stream. Uh, just let me know <laughs> how the audio sounds. Uh, all right, so uh, today we're going back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop, right, Jeremy? Yeah, just for this uh, this first part here, we'll just cool. uh, do a quick Photoshop mock-up. I don't know if you guys have spent much time doing Photoshop mock-ups. Uh, yesterday, I kind of showed the process that I go through when I present a logo and brand identity. Like I said, if you haven't had a chance to check out yesterday's, uh, you'll see most of that at the beginning. Whenever I present logos, uh, I always, I try to show them in some sort of context. So uh, whether it's, you know, brand identity for stationery or packaging, or maybe just put it on the side of a mug for a coffee shop or some coasters for a restaurant or something like that. Um, there are tons of great photo mockups on Behance that you can find. Uh, I believe Adobe Stock has them as well. Uh, but just wanted to kind of give you kind of a quick how-to on, on doing that. Um, you're, you're not likely to find something that's exactly perfect. Um, you know, they are mock-ups, but, uh, you know, this is kind of where we're going to start today. And I'll show you kind of how I, I go about uh, placing my art in here and lining everything up and generating that mock-up. Yeah, and real quick, um, I'm just going to hop over to Behance. So literally, I went on Behance, hit the search button, and just hit mock-up. And there is things from spray bottles to uh, business cards to uh, some screens to posters to patches. There are so many great resources on oh, Behance yeah. um, and great resources on Adobe Stock. So make sure you check those out because it really can step up um, your portfolios and your presentations. Yeah, I've, I've actually uh, had several projects where I've put something, for instance, like on a carryout bag or for a restaurant or what have you, and the client 
uh, falls in love with the bag and then falls in love with the logo. Yes. So it's it's really, really great idea to be able to just kind of show somebody the context. It's a lot easier to sell your project. It's a lot easier to convince someone that what you're doing is on track for them. Uh, so I highly, highly recommend going through that, taking the extra time to show some application studies when you're doing logo presentations for sure. Have you ever so. uh, done a mock-up like on a client that you're like a t-shirt mock-up and you're like, I have a picture of my client and I'm going to mock them up in the t-shirt. I think that might freak them out a little bit. I was going to say, it either is like a power move or it's like you're like immediately out. A stalker, yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that one. Yeah, before uh, we hop in, sorry, I forgot to do this. Uh, Jeremy, where can people find you? Uh, Yeah, the best place is at my website, which is legodesign.com. Oh, is that floating as well? Oh, It's it's floating above me. You're you're behind a bicycle. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, Yeah. Uh, so you can find Jeremy at all these links, uh, follow along wherever you want. Um, pick one, pick all of them. Uh, I don't care. I'm not your mom. Uh, all right, cool. Let's hop in and <laughs> do some mock-ups. Great. Yeah. So this is basically what a mock-up looks like when you get it. Um, there's typically uh, lots of layers that come along uh, come along with them. And you'll see like this one before you uh, open up this this folder. You'll, you'll see that you can turn the drop shadow on and off. You can change the background color uh, and what have you. Uh, but I'm going to dive into this folder here a little bit. And typically, good mock-ups will have uh, a place where it's really, really clear. A little icon down here in the bottom right-hand corner is basically telling me that there's a placed, uh, like a dynamic uh, image or file in here. So I'm just basically going to double-click this folder, and it's going to bring up this this grid and what's nice about these grids is it basically shows you kind of like where your center line is on your package they they're really helpful uh and then all you have to do is uh and i just basically use the file in my directly out of my layout and i'll show you why so i'm going to go to place in a linked file the reason you want to go with a linked file is because if you want to work back and forth if you go back to illustrator make a change and save it it will automatically dynamically re-link to your uh, file in Photoshop versus if you put an embedded file in there, you're going to do this process over and over again. And I'll show you why that's really helpful in this situation. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to place linked and then I'm going to navigate to my, uh, to my file here and I'm going to go ahead and place it. And you're just now, placing here's, like the whole, the whole, you're just grabbing like, cool, this is my file. It's all the sides. It's not like a specific part of that it's literally the whole file right it's the whole file and what's great about that is you don't have to like copy and paste into a new document save that out as the as the um, build file for this you can just basically link directly to the same file you're not creating files all over the place i hate creating files all over the place so this is the best way to do it um, that i've found so yeah so basically this is really really important uh, in your options where it says crop to make sure that you go to art box. Uh, this is really important for when it relinks in um, in just a second. And I'll show you why that is. So basically, it's going to bring your uh, bring your art in uh, on a separate layer. And you're going to basically want to scale this up so that the edge of your die line where the package is going to trim gets as close to where it needs to be. Artbox sounds like a really cool hip club in like downtown LA that like Andy Warhol has actually been living at for all these years. Welcome I think it might be. Box. Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, uh, chances are because it's a mock-up, you're not going to get something that's absolutely perfect. Um, you know, this is about as close as they get actually. Like might might not be quite getting the top uh, exactly where it needs to line up here and I may be trimming a little bit off the bottom, but really this is uh, kind of for me to be able to run this by the client. Um, I, oftentimes clients see all these pink lines and all the stuff going on in here and they're not sure like where the package ends or, or where something goes next. So oftentimes I will use this same process to, to actually present the, back to them the concept, make sure that I get sign off and approval because it really does uh, take a lot of the confusion out out of the process. So Absolutely. if I, 
yeah, so if I basically, I'm just gonna close out of this because when I double click that, it opened a new, a new tab you'll notice here at the top. Uh, so I'm just gonna save this and it will magically, automatically, auto magically. Oh, that's good. I, think I just made up a new word. Uh, drop it right in here and show, show you exactly what it looks like wrapped uh, on a on an object and uh, this is something object. that it's literally the same thing that we did with linking a file from illustrator it's doing that in photoshop so it's called a smart object and it's basically saying we're going to make a new file and whatever you do in that file is going to apply to another file it's inception of just like adding things that are non-destructive so you can keep editing them as you go so as your yep. client if i see this jeremy i'll be your client for a second oh hello jeremy mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I have an accent. Hey, um, client? I don't know. Um, those pink lines don't look great on this. Can we can we edit those out? We sure can. I have the technology. Do some Photoshop so, magic? Yes. So basically what we're going to do is I'm just going to open up that Illustrator file that where I created this. I'm just This is why I like working in layers. We talked a lot about layers yesterday. Um, I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to turn this template the turn this off so I'm not seeing it anymore and just save this file. And now when I go back to my uh, Photoshop file, uh, you'll notice that it magically disappeared. And this is because it is a linked file. And so now when I close this, boom, it's boom. done. And so this is so, this yeah. is really great to have the non-destructive workflow because again, if my if as a client I come back and I'm like, what if everything was brown? You could very easily go in and be like, here it is in brown. It doesn't look great, and I'll be like, you're right, it's terrible. Um, and you can just right. rapidly prototype and show them like this is why this is like what it needs to be or the changes we need to make um, very easily. Yep. Yeah, and 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 one word of caution: if you don't use Artbox when you import. So uh, if you if you think about when you're importing your file before this had all the those like numbers and all the other stuff sitting on the outside of the of the illustration in Illustrator. Yep. And when they went away, those go away. And what happens if you don't use Artbox is is Photoshop's going to rescale it to fit. So it's not going to line back up the way that it is here. So if you bring it in as, and import it as Artbox then you don't have to worry about it. And when you save it automatically updates and keeps it in the same position it was in before. Yep. Yeah. So the other thing I've done in the past is um, I'll go in and actually like Photoshop the product into the window here, which is a totally different uh, setup. But for most projects, you don't have a window or, or what have you. So um, I use this all the time for um, beer bottles when I'm doing work for breweries. Um, you can find some great like caps like the crown bottle crowns um, yep. all that stuff is available and it's, it's really great so the other thing i i like to do is so so this is basically the front now i can save this file as you know uh pouch photo mock-up front uh and then or i can export a jpeg or what, whatever i want but um the nice thing also about importing it the way that i just did was that whole document is still sitting over here and all i got to do is slide this over like that, center it up. If I want to be real specific, I can center it. I can bring the uh, die back in again and center it again. The other thing you can do is you can actually duplicate this layer, um, create it, and then just hide whichever one you don't want to render at the time. Um, close it, hit save, and now you've got uh, a rendered back of the package. So you can show them both. That's great. That it, and I mean, it's the equivalent of like, doing the front and back of the t-shirt that you're like, I took the collar out, but it's the same thing. But, and I was looking away doing some technical stuff and I came back and I'm like, how do you do the back of it so fast? And it's literally the front that you just replaced the artwork with, which is really cool. And it's then right. if you need to, you can go back and edit either side. You have right. full control without being destructive at all. Yeah. And, and so here's a real simple way to do it is if you just duplicate this layer um, and then you take this layer here and, and drag your shift drag. So now you're, you're showing the front again. Um, you can basically kind of get that in position. And then, um, when you save it, you have a front version like this dot, dot, dot. Yep. And then you can just 
go back in here and uh, hide that layer to show your back, close the back of it, and then close that one. So it's really simple. And like I said, if I make a change anywhere on this file, that's the other nice thing about not um, exporting these and saving them as different files or what a lot of people do is copy and paste, which you can do. You can copy your Illustrator file and paste it into a smart object layer in, um, in Photoshop, but it doesn't, it no longer relinks back to the original document. So. Yep. Um, question uh, from Luisa. Do you have any tips on how to warp the images to follow folds and curves in packaging or fabric? Um, yeah, I, I know it can be done. It's, it's being done here. I am, that is a little bit outside my pay grade. Um, I'm not really, I don't do a lot of that stuff. I know it can be done and I'm sure, uh, there's some really great tutorials on how to do it, but, yeah. um, so I'm assuming it, you use like the puppet warp. Yep. It's a lot uh, of puppet warp uh, and probably the mesh, mesh warp. Here is a lot of displacement maps. Displacement maps displacement are really maps, great yeah. for doing uh, t-shirts and packaging. But the great thing is, if you look on Behance, look on Adobe Stock, there are great templates like this that you don't have to do any of that. So Jeremy hasn't done any of the folds, any of any nope. of that. It's just flat file. And someone else has done all of the technicality so that he can just place his file and create a photorealistic mock-up like that. So it's really yeah, great. Adobe yeah. Dimension is really fantastic for that. Um, I would almost rather learn Adobe Dimension than learn how to use displacement maps and meshes and that kind of stuff because Dimension just can do all of that. Yeah, yeah. There's some great tools out there. Like uh, like Andrew just said, like all of these, I basically download or buy these, and it's as easy as just pasting it into where it says paste your artwork here or you know place your artwork here, and it just does it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of people in chat are saying dimension a hundred percent. That's great. Cool. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yep. I haven't spent much time with dimension. So. Hey, Cal Reeves. Thanks for watching. Um, cool. So are, do we call this done? Like, did we do it? I think this is done. Yeah. Photo, photo mock-up is done. Uh, and it. yeah, it's great. Uh, the other thing that's great about being able to do this is if you can get a photo realistic mock-up of your, of your product, uh, and let's say you sent this off to print and like these packages, I think are like an eight week um, print time on these. So um, I can go ahead and be working on their website and save these out and build their e-commerce and show what these are going to look like uh, in package or on, on the shelf while they're off getting printed. Well, I don't even have one. So uh, that's the other thing that's really, really great about being able to do these is it saves you a ton of time. Uh, and photography time, frankly, yep. for, for not having to get, get the stuff shot. So Exactly. Well, we did it. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. I'm I threw out the outro slide, too. Dude, time is <laughs> flying. Oh, my goodness, man. Man. <laughs> Time's irrelevant now. Um, so a couple more questions before we hop into the next thing from chat that are coming in. Um, yeah. How do you make... Uh, how do you make it if you can't find a mock-up that is like what you're trying to do or mock-up? Yeah, so this one actually, I did. I'm, I will share a little bit of background. Uh, was a little bit off before I uh, came on the 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 show. So I actually went through and tweaked it a little bit. You can um, tweak these a little bit to get them where they need to be. In in my situation, you just kind of have to look at the folders that are typically sitting above uh, above your artwork. So for instance, you've got this, this layer is basically just your highlights layer. It's showing, it's basically doing it like a displacement map or, or whatever of, of set to, to show the highlights. And then below this, we have a packet shadows, which is another layer. And then, um, this, there's a, a transparency mask on the whole folder. So as long as you go through and change all of those, you can adjust it a little bit to fit. So you can just basically like select these two layers here um, by holding the command key down and then just go into uh, transform mode and just kind of tweak it a little bit. And then basically you need to go through and do the exact same thing uh, in, your, in your transparency mask up here. So there are ways to take something that's not exactly lined up and get it a little closer to where it needs to be. Yeah, and if you have some kind of custom packaging, which I believe we're about to do, right, Jeremy? 
Yes. Yeah. So yes. if you have some custom packaging, we're actually going to hop into that right now um, for the X next uh, hour 15 or so um, and show you how to work with that. Can you show us like physically what we're going to be doing today? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I and just just so you know, I will not be doing a photo mock up of this one simply because it is so custom. I don't have a photo mock up of it. Um, you can do something as simple as take a photo of the mock-up and then you can just take your art and kind of skew it uh, and apply it. I've done that a couple times, uh, but I will not have, uh, I don't have a, a mock-up of this. So. Yep, but you do Sorry have like a physical, like you folded I do, a version I do. of it, right? Yes, I do. So let me get out of Photoshop here and that will take me to my Illustrator file. I'm gonna close our pouch from yesterday. Bye. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do this box out of corrugated. Um, basically I did a ton of sketches on this to kind of like look at different ways to package this. If you didn't join us yesterday, um, this is actually the product that we're going to package. This is, um, a, this works with the, with the harness that they have, uh, for the, for the birds. And basically what happens is, is this stake goes in the ground and there's, there's two of them here and one is placed about you know, 30 feet away. And there's this line that runs between and then attached to the bird's harness is uh, a leash extension that uh, flies that connects to this. So it allows the bird to go outside and fly the whole length. I'm sure my arm probably disappearing when I go too far, uh, fly the whole length of this. So you can take your bird out and give them exercise on a big field. It's yep. pretty cool, pretty cool product. So, um, but the current way they're doing it is uh, they are doing it like this and they're hand stapling every time they put one of these together. And not only that, uh, they're hand cutting this hole out every time they package one of these. That's so crazy. Um, yeah, it's a ton of work. Uh, the other problem that, that they're running into with this is that because of this, this was this is kind of a neat idea where you could hang, uh, use the, the loop at the top to hang this in a retail environment. The problem with it is, is when they package this up, both the uh, the pointy part here that they they're smartly putting a rubber tip on so no one jabs himself with, uh, and this part sticking out will tend to tear out of the package, the shipping package. That yep. they send and then it in. you so, have a version that you've made that is what the new one is going to be, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, one thing I will say is if you can get a, a really good a relationship with a local packaging company, they will just knock out uh, prototypes for you. They'll laser cut them and, and everything. And uh, one thing that's really important is that you make sure that you give the, the packaging company the actual product, a sample of it, so they can help set it up. But it basically works based on my sketches. So I'll send them a sketch that's similar to something like this. And uh, and then oh, I sorry. Will let me hop basically... back onto your screen. Sorry, I had oh, you full sorry. screen so you could show off the products. Uh, let oh, me no problem. Reappear real quick. Achoo, there okay. we go. Um, and then Magic. let me go ahead and hop over to your screen. There we go. Yeah. So basically, I will send a kind of an outline or a sketch like this to the client and say, "What do you think?" And then I'll also be working with the packaging company at the same time and making sure that I'm not promising something that they can't do. Uh, so one of the first ones that came back was very similar, and that's this one right here. Um, it's basically got zip ties that hold it together here, and then we've created a box that holds the pointy, spiky things. And then also, there's some other pieces that have to go with this. There's uh, the leash extension and then some other accessories, so it keeps everything uh, inside this box here. Cool. And then you so, have so your sketches, you have the actual product that you're working with and then you have all the dye lines and stuff that are from the manufacturer mm -hmm. right on that artboard right next to us um yep, and yep. then is it going to be pretty much the same process of taking the elements and plugging them in um like we did yesterday with the pouch but kind of in a whole different way of looking at it yeah somewhat yep yep pretty pretty similar uh one of the things i ran into with my original sketch with this is that with corrugated um, it's not, it's a, it's a very different beast. It, the way it's printed is very different. Uh, it's not nearly as precise as being able to print on like full color process or print on like a chipboard type packaging. Uh, so the other, the other issue is, is that, that it costs a ton more to print on both sides. So, um, one of the inherent problems with this, I don't know if you guys can, can 
see it before I did, but basically if I print on the outside of this box here, print here, I print here, I print on the top, that's all great. Uh, and I can, I can print on the back because all of this is contiguous surface that's running on the outside of the box. The problem is, is that th this panel here that's going vertical is actually an extension of the inside of the box. So I can print here, but I can't print here, which is really, really important. So um, did some other sketches, worked back and forth with the box manufacturer a little bit, and we came up with a solution. And I wanna show you this because uh, the die line, it'll be confusing otherwise if, if you don't see this. So oh, sorry. this is oh, actually- sorry. And Let me disappear again. There you go, you're good. I wanna okay. give you the full yeah. screen to show all the things. Okay, thanks. Um, so I don't know if you can see it well, but basically what we're doing is very similar to the one I just showed you, except that in this situation, it's folding here and there's a flap that is coming across and gluing on the front which means that we can now take the art that was on the outside of the box here and we're just going to basically wrap this around and now we're printing on the complete outside of the box and now it's just and, one side um, and now it's one side yep so yep. we're printing on one side and that saved them a boatload of money so that's that's the fun thing i love about doing projects like this is that um, there's a lot of problem solving involved, uh, and I love working with partners like the box company I work with. They're they're called Welsh Packaging, um, and they're uh, they do they do a great job. But they love the, the the process of kind of problem solving along with me on stuff like this. So. Cool. All right. Uh, let's uh, one. Let's bring me back. Presto change -o. Um, and let's hop back into Illustrator. That's the most fun I've had. As you showed packaging, I took myself off and then reappeared, and it made me laugh a lot. Um, so let's hop back into Illustrator and let's start building and take a look at what that looks like of having that special piece that folds over um, and how you even approach this kind of uh, die lines and stuff. Sure. So you can see, you know, this is that fold over panel right here that folds around to the front of the packaging. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of how that works. Um, one of the things that I often do, especially when you can see the product through the packaging, it's really, really important to um, to show to 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 keep in mind where that's going to go because you don't want to get the project back from the printer and then uh, incorporate the product into it and only to find out that you covered something up. So, uh, what I typically do is I will take the product, I'll lay it on my scanner and scan it at full size and then draw draw it out in Illustrator so I have exactly what it's what it's going to look like. So. I already have one of these and I'm just going to pull it over over into my uh, layout here. So this is basically the what the layout, uh, what the what this piece and how this piece lays out um, on over my layout. So I'm going to like I did yesterday, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this product. And if you're watching in chat, you have one hour to submit your daily creative challenges. We will be reviewing those in one hour. Um, so go ahead and make sure you're submitting those. Use hashtag AI Creative Challenge uh, at the, uh, on Behance, or you can post them in Discord at this link right above us, bit.ly slash AI Discord. Just a little reminder, one hour. Um, cool. And then, uh, so this part from here down doesn't appear anywhere since it's inside the box. I don't really need to worry about it. Um, I've also drawn some little lines in here to show uh, where the zip ties are. And so the other thing I would recommend doing is on that product layer as well is go ahead and drop in uh, some Ziploc. Ziplocs on the other side because it, you may you may be tempted to put something or some artwork in these areas too. And you wanna make sure that that doesn't show up or that, that you're not putting something that ends up getting covered by the Ziplocs on the other side of the package, if that yep. makes sense. Yep, I've done that before with belly bands that I've printed something that has a belly band that goes around it, which is just an extra little piece that usually you glue around. And then there was information where the belly band was going. And I was like, dang it, I didn't think about it. We had to move the belly band up and it just didn't look great. Yep, it happens. Um, so the other thing uh, that you have that you need to take into consideration here is that there is a, uh, there needs to be a bleed on all of this. With corrugated, the the tolerances as far as how much the color can shift and move is really, really uh, is not nearly as precise as when when you're printing uh, like full color printing or working with you know a, another type of format. So you really, really need to make sure that 
if you're using uh, two colors that butt up against each other, you need to be really, really careful about that um, because they, they will shift in the process. So yep. you always need to make sure you keep that in mind. And so what I like to do just to kind of get an idea for, for how something like that might shift, I'm going to pull the two color version of their logo in and kind of give you an idea of a way to kind of solve that. And I, I'll do this at the end of the, uh, at the end of the, the, the package project too, typically to make sure that whatever I'm creating doesn't shift too far out of whack. So, um, I'm just going to call this, this layer, this is going to be my logo and I'm going to drop it in here. But what I will do is like, if you think about like, okay, your logo is going to go say on the front here. I don't mind this being a little bit back here because in my sketch, you'll see, I'm going to also be putting a lot of the branding on the front. So in order to keep this centered on the package, this will go, this product will pop in front of it a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. Um, but one of the things that I will do oftentimes is um, I'll use my direct selection tool and pick a color and then go to select same fill color. Um, and then I'm going to go to transform and move. And what I want to do is kind of see like, what's the worst case scenario. So a lot of times they'll tell you, especially like with corrugated, it could move up to an eighth of an inch. Uh, so I'll go into my distance here and I'm going to set a worst case scenario and go 0.125 um, and see, see where that would, where that could go. Which is an eighth of preview. an inch. Those of you designers that yes, yes. that's a lot of math. Yes. So basically what this is telling me is I could, I could send this out to print and this could be what my logo comes back looking like in a worst case scenario. Um, and you can kind of play with it a little bit, but you don't realize uh, oftentimes how far an eighth of an inch can be um, until you until you play with it a little bit like this. So this automatically uh, tells me I can't use the two color logo for this job. It's just it's just not going to work. Yep. Um, in an ideal world, it would be great, but uh, it's going to come back, and my client is going to be really really upset with me about it. Um, so and and the good news is is that my package company would would uh, definitely tell me ahead of time. So it's always good to have your, your one color logo version, uh, ready to go as well for that, for that very purpose. So, uh, all right. So basically I'm going to do the same thing, similar kind of build out that I did yesterday. The difference is, is that, um, who in the chat, by the way, can tell me the difference between full color printing and spot color printing interested in hearing that's a good question i'll watch chat and see if people know i believe that people will uh, someone's talking about trapping already so i think that uh -huh. uh, yeah yep you know i just realized so we don't have our vibes on y'all i didn't do a vibe check before this hold on wait we gotta we gotta get our vibes checked there we go. All right, we're vibing now, Jeremy. It went quiet for a second, and I remembered yesterday how we talked about like we had some good vibes, and I didn't have music on. So there we go. We're vibing now, everybody. Nice. Uh, so similar to I, what I did yesterday, if, if you didn't join yesterday, um, this this logo is based on this, this shape, like this six-sided shape. Uh, so I'm going to continue to use that through this process here, and we're going to basically... Um, pull from uh, similar uh, a similar uh, look so that they when these are sitting on the shelf next to each other that they have a uh, that they look like they belong to the same company so and a lot of people uh, basically, got it so full color is made with cmyk so combinations of other colors and spot yeah. color is a pre-mixed color like a uh, pantone that they can match exactly that color that's right. And so think, so you kind of have to approach working with corrugated as a, uh, as almost like you're printing a t-shirt Yep. because it's spot color, they're spot color printed. Um, you have two Pantone colors to work with and that's, that's what you've got. That's yep. what you've got to work with. And so sometimes with some of those colors too, you can play with getting like a third color, um, depending on how they overlap and interact. Um, with some colors, you can play with the inks that if it's like a red on a blue, like something like this, you can get a third color that's like a purple out of it by printing over each other. 
Uh, but you have to talk with printers, see how the inks are going to react, all that stuff. But sometimes you can cheat and get another color out of those two colors. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we'll do a little bit of overprinting on this as well if we yes. get to it today. Uh, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to kind of block out my design here a little bit. Uh, and the reason I do this is because I need to start thinking about how these panels are going to play together. So uh, if one of the trickier spots on this design is this area right here. And the reason is that like we talked about bleeds earlier or shifting, if I basically put this right here on this line, hoping that the front panel is going to have that gold, but the side panel uh, on the completed package is not, I'm going to be really disappointed because this is either going to shift up and I'm going to have white, a white gap here, or it's going to shift down. And I'm going to end up with some gold at the top of the side of the box and people are going to wonder where that came from. So you have to kind of be thinking three dimensionally a little bit while you're, while you're doing this to, to kind of think through, you know, how, how this is going to lay out, uh, with the other pieces and parts around it. So, um, once again, I'm just kind of going through and laying out sort of, uh, a rough idea of where everything's gonna, where everything's gonna go on here and kind of keeping in mind my sketch. Right. So I want this in my mind, this part right here is gold and then the top of the box is gold. And so what I want is this Chevron to kind of come down and make this whole thing gold right here. So this Rad. kind of goes like this blue at the top, white, and then gold going all the way through here. So that's, that's kind of what I'm working on next. Uh, so basically this here is the front, this panel over here is the front of the box. So I'm going to just cheat a little bit here and draw a square. So I have my center point. Yep. Um, I do that all the time that I try to find the center something and I'm like blank rectangle. All right, there's a the center. That's right. Yep. Yep. And then just kind of line up your, your guide on that center. So now I kind of have an idea of where my center is going to be there. And I love the idea that you were talking about of like, I mean, I know that if this is going to bleed over, it's going to be an eighth of an inch. Like it's going to bleed over and look weird. Let's incorporate that color so that even if it does bleed over, it looks like it was intentional that it's like, oh yeah, it's supposed to be a piece that's there. That's it's not a bug. It's a feature. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so basically I, what I want to be able to do is have, here's the front of the package and then you'll, your eye will jump over to here and see what's what's happening on this side over here. But here are my two side pieces. One one kind of comes off here and then this one jumps across over to this side. So basically what I'm gonna do is take this hexagon here and I'm gonna just do something like that with it. So board. now I have, yeah, yep. Um, and then I'm gonna pull this across here and bring it down. So here's where we're going to kind of jump, jump our bleed on this side. And then I'm going to select again, what I'm, what I'm going to do here actually is draw another guide where this is intersecting this fold here. Yep. So when I pull, when I, I'm going to option shift drag this across and what i want to do is line it up to make sure that that chevron is when it folds at the same angle so that it looks like you just printed on the same thing when really it's two separate things that are then coming together to make one right yep that's right so and then i just sent that to the back so basically uh i'm making this piece go across here because what i i really do want to do is uh, avoid the, the possibility that the color jumps to the other side uh, or that we that we have too much, we don't have enough tolerance going on right here. So this doesn't bother me. I don't mind mind this. I would rather the mistake be like on the back corner of the package than for it to show up on the front or the front sides of the package. So you kind of have to really think prior, prioritize like if there's gonna be something that doesn't look quite right, where would I rather that be? if yep. that makes sense. Yep. Um, so you kind of have to prioritize that stuff. So I'm going to, the other thing is, is that because this piece 
uh, the front and the back also align here. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up and just let that also kind of work its way onto the back of the package. It's cool how you kind of are letting, I mean, it's the equivalent of a writer that like is talking and is like, I kind of just let the character speak to me that like you have the sketch, but you're kind of letting the shape speak to you almost of like, okay, where does this want to go? Where does it want to fold? How does it want to meet up? That it's that kind of following that core that you set out for what the brand looks like. Yep. Yep. So that, that should work pretty well. Um, when this is folded around to the back side of this, this will line up nicely on the back. So if you flip the package around that kind of that header, which we have on uh, the other package as well. So we're gonna just kind of continue that look uh, from the other one. And then um, we are going to, uh, I, wanna, I wanna bring the title or the name of this product right to the front of the box right here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull from my cheat sheet here and I'm gonna grab uh grab a couple assets one of them is the logo um their logo that i have we'll put that right here on the front of the box um and so here's another here's another opportunity to kind of think about um an issue we're running into so like when when i talked to you earlier i said don't let colors but up against each other. If if I did this the way I have it set right now, we would have a problem yep. because uh, they're not. It's not going to knock out. It's going to knock out. So if this this would basically look like this, and be if, completely unusable, right? Be completely unusable. So if especially when you have a really dark color and a lighter color, you want to set the darker color to overprint the color below it. So basically what you do is you go to windows and you go to appearance. I believe it's, nope, it is not appearance, it's attributes. I always get those, they're both A's and I always get those confused. So um, I've already said it for this, but basically what you're gonna do is anytime you want a color uh, to overprint another, another color, you can just click the overprint fill button in attributes and now when it, when your printer separates these colors out for printing, it will it will be fine. It will print the bl the blue over top of the other color. And another nice tip on something like that, Adobe. Thank you, Adobe. Uh, you can go into View and go to Overprint Preview, yes. and that actually will show you, like you see here, that the that color is going to mix a little bit with the color below it, but that's okay. I would rather it mix and turn a little bit green uh, than for it to misregister. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So. It, it's, it's better for it to be a little wrong than a lot wrong, I guess. Right. That's right. Yep. Yep. And this is not, this is a, a much less perfect solution for printing, but it is a lot less expensive. And for them uh, it's great because it, it makes a nice, um, a nice durable box for them to ship in. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, basically, oh, didn't mean to zoom in that far. So I'm going to kind of look back at my sketch here. Um, I'm going to next uh, thing I'm going to do. Well, actually I'm going to throw this kind of like bottom bar that I did, uh, on my other packaging as well. The other thing you do want to do is try your best to avoid giant, like large swatches of color. like. This is pushing it a little bit almost, um, but I wouldn't go, it, this looks a lot bigger than it actually is simply because it's all this color out here that actually isn't gonna get, get printed. Uh, but you wanna avoid too much ink co coverage uh, as well on corrugated because you can end up, you know, I keep doing that. You can end up- um, Getting wonky. Uh, draining it, yeah, yep. it'll, it, it'll run low, so. Uh, overprint preview, yes, uh, Val is the way that we did that. Um, you can do multiply sometimes gives you a similar effect, but yes, overprint mm -hmm. preview, um, a hundred percent is the way to see how those interact. Um, and yeah, again, uh, the real world application of that is what's happening here. That this is spot color, spot color. The blue and red are spot mm -hmm. colors here, and then you see the way that they are interacting is this purple. And that would be 
um, what you would see in that overprint preview. When you turn on, you'd see what the separations actually turn out to be. Uh, so yesterday I kind of showed you how I go about setting my type in a circle uh, for these badges. So I, I've i already done that here. So I'm just kind of bringing those in. Those are gonna sit on that side of the box. Yep, and if you're curious how to do that, Daily Creative Challenges next week, we will be making badges and laying out type on a path. And um, we'll be going super in depth. Jeremy touched on it yesterday, but if you really wanna get uh, in depth and hands-on, we'll be doing that next week. So sign up for those challenges. So let's bring our Made in USA badge in here. Speaking of badges, once again, we wanna make sure that Subway. that is, yes. I'm gonna put this on the same layer as the logo. I love how organized and your layers are. It's just, it's gorgeous to watch. It's an art in itself. So here's the beauty of it. This is why I love it. And I know there's lots of naysayers out there for, for layers in Illustrator, but um, what I can do is I can just lock down this foundation, foundational shapes layer. And now I can uh, just grab stuff so like this and, yeah, that's great. and not have to worry about selecting everything that's in the background. Um, it's really, really helpful. And then once again, I need to make sure that I go in here to uh, attributes and set that to uh, overprint fill, or we'll have that same registration issue yep. later. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my, my copy doc where I have my copy from my writer on this. Somebody said badges. We don't need no stinking badges. I love it. Fantastic. I think that every time that I make a badge, I used to make actual badges for where I worked uh, for people to have. And every time we printed them, I was like, we don't need no stinking badges. So this is kind of my, uh, what I'll do a lot of times is I'll share my sketch with my writer and say like, this is where this is going to go. And this is where this is going to go. Kind of gives some idea of how much copy I need, some direction. And it, it's really helpful for any writer to kind of know, well, where is this going to show up? Like, is this just simply instructional? Is this relevant to selling the product on the front? Uh, because the tone or the type of information will change based on where it goes on the package. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call it copy. You can call it text or copy, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to actually lock everything else down. So uh, on our package we did yesterday, we're gonna stick with that Acumen font. And Acumen condensed. But these are really, really long names, so they kind of get stacked up in here. Yes, the eternal scroll. I believe that that's, this is the equivalent of like looking at social media for designers. You just like scroll eternally. Yes. So we'll just go with uh, acumen and yeah, there we go, variable. There we go, perfect. Um, and the other thing is you really need to do your best to avoid using font to, uh, type too small. Uh, yeah, we talked situation. about this yesterday. So, yeah, uh, because like I said, the, the, corrugated can be a bear when it comes to um, when it comes to all that stuff. Like ink just, absorption and all that. Yeah, what? Um, yeah, absolutely. What is the small size that you would print? We had this question yesterday. What's the smallest size that you would print on something like this? I'm going 13 point on this. I'm not going to go much. I'm okay. not going to go much smaller than 13. I'm, I might go 12 for some of the little detail things. Yep. Uh, but this again is one of those things where I will always vet this with my uh, corrugated box printer and make sure that they feel comfortable with it. Because if, if they don't feel comfortable with it, then you know I, they're they're not going to stand behind it either. So. Yep. Uh, but and you do need to make sure that you work with them closely. Yeah, and playing with and understanding the size of the actual physical product, this will be something that people will need to see from a little further away and like catch their eye mm -hmm. and be able to get some information. Whereas doing publication design, where I've worked with my type, I'm used to setting type the smallest at like nine, 10, maybe nine. 
um, because it's something that people can hold to their faces it can bring closer and further away so there are I think some standards out there uh, but just be aware that as you're working on things if you hear me say 9 and Jeremy says 12 I'm probably talking about something else and make sure that you're thinking about where is the application and that might help educate you on how big that type needs to be yep so what I usually do in this at this point when I start bringing my type in my copy in is I just kind of loosely lay it where I think it's going to go uh, just to kind of get an idea of, of how where stuff's going to go is it going to fit um, am I going to run into any trouble having it there uh, so make sure I've got everything pulled over correctly I think I may have yeah, uh, do you miss the thing I think we I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. Wait. I think I need this aviator <laughs> flight line. J jury's out. Uh, while you look at that, um, tomorrow, everyone, a little housekeeping. If you would like to join us, um, Office Hours is happening tomorrow. I believe it will be happening at 1 p.m. with Nick Longo and I. Tomorrow, we will be talking about secret weapons of max employment. Uh, and we will be talking about little things that you can do in your portfolios and case studies to help you find a job, find an internship. A lot of students are graduating or looking for jobs. So we'll be um, helping you find those tiny little details that you can change to bring every Everything up to a whole nother level. Uh, you can check that out right here on Behance or you can go to hawk.live and there is a link there um, so you can book markets uh, for tomorrow and come back and hang out with us. Oh yeah, that was a great vibe that we just had right there. It got quiet for a second and we just had the perfect little, I loved it. I'm in the zone. Oh, that's fine. Totally in the zone. Uh, chat, if you have any questions for us, uh, go ahead and drop them into chat. Um, and how about this? This is a question I haven't seen in chat. If you have watched one of these streams uh, and you have had a favorite that you've learned something from or you've uh, just had fun watching, go ahead and drop what that was, just the topic of it in chat. Um, I love seeing a lot of you in familiar faces in these, uh, in these chats and in these streams. So if you've seen one that you're like, man, that was a really good one. You guys should go check that out. Just drop the title or who it was or what they were doing in chat and let us know. I want to know. I want to know what the ones to watch. Yes. I, same. Every now and then, somebody would be like, oh, yeah, like check out this stream. And it literally is like one that happened the one after one that I did. And I'm like, how did I miss this? It's so good. <laughs> like, I was laying on a bed missing great content. Um, what's the name of the font that you're using again, Jeremy? This is called Hebden, H-E-B-D. D E N. Yeah. I love this font because, um, it's, it's like super, um, unique. I'm and what's great is, is it comes in these two different styles. This is called, uh, Hebden incised, and this is Hebden grotesque and they work really well together. Same, same, uh, type designer. And they basically have uh, similar like X heights and stuff. So they, they, they work really, really nicely together. Yep. And it, when you're working with type and pairing type, you either want to have a lot of similarity in the X height or you want to have extreme contrast, um, excuse me, um, in the Y. I like to do extreme contrast in the Y to where we have super tall letters matched with super squashy letters, um, I think becomes very interesting. Uh, and again, that's a suggestion. There's no right or way wrong, wrong way to do this. Um, there's just suggestions. Um, Jeremy, and this hopefully isn't, yes. I'm not even going to bring it up yet because it'll be way too distracting. I want to take a look okay. at, um, you are doing packaging design, but you also have designed some like actual products. And so I want to take a look at kickstand, uh, at some point before the end of the stream. So if we don't get okay. to it, just remind me, uh, and we'll take a look at it. We have about 30 minutes until challenge, uh, review. So go ahead and, um, Submit those. That's the word that I wanted. I was I was gonna say enter those, but I think I don't know that works. Submit those um, on Behance or in our Discord. Uh, Thomas is asking about if you experience any kind of uh, lag as you're working with a lot of complex shapes or anything like that, or um, do you uh, will you move to outline mode if you have too many shapes and it starts to lag a little bit? Will you switch over to outline mode? Yeah, and uh, this one is very, very basic. There's not a lot going on on this. I just uh, closed a 330 megabyte Illustrator file right before I got yes. on the call uh, where 
yeah, those those will definitely spend some time uh, messing with your processor for sure. Yep, and um, uh, actually, in the latest update of uh, Illustrator, I think it came out uh, a couple months ago, they did a whole bunch of updates to make handling a lot of anchor points much quicker. So it is getting more and more refined as those updates come out. Um, and so Thomas, if you haven't updated to the latest version, update to the latest version, they're always working on making that. Uh, they know that if it gets really, really uh, dense on anchor points, it can start to slow down and they're working on it and improving it for us because they want to help us with our um, workflows. Any save time for us is save time for clients and then everyone's happy. Yep, yep. Um, the other thing is, again, I hate to keep harping on the whole layers thing. Uh, what I've found a lot of times is it's really what, not necessarily what's in the document, but what you're displaying at the time. So if you're working on something and you have like a ton of texture that you're overlaying, make the texture a separate uh, a separate layer, and then you can just turn it off, keep working on your illustration and just kind of check it every once in a while. Yep. Um, that, that will definitely help slow things down quite a bit too. Yep, so, there's a lot of times that I'm doing crazy texture or something and I have to throw it into outline mode and my brain is just trying to remember like, okay, cool, there are colors here and they're interacting and this is happening there and this is happening there. And then I'm like, okay, let's turn it on and wait and like get it, get it going. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So good, basically, thanks. It's coming along. So I did my bullet point, uh, my bullet point trick there again, and it worked this time. Um, I don't know what I was doing wrong yesterday. Oh, see, see, I'm trying to grab something that's on a layer that I've locked. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back off. Put one of these down here as well. Kind of fill in that space a little bit. Um, and then I think I'm going to put their, I'm going to put their tagline right on the front here as well. So that is this, give your bird the freedom to take flight. Fly bird, fly. Spread your Go wings back into our fly. One day I'll fly away. Oh, little Moulin Rouge. Oh man. Love Mulan Rouge. Yesterday. Oh man, that that is like one of those songs that anytime it comes on, my heart just like stops and I'm like, well, I've been talking for three days streaming, but I'm gonna lose my voice screaming this one. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, yeah, big fan of musicals over here. Oh, that's true. Your whole family is right. Oh my gosh, my kids. It, my my, I, we're like the Von Trapps, except I don't sing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I just imagine your kid going to sleep and they do like the goodbye and they're <laughs> going down the staircase. It's a constant, it's constantly singing musicals around my house. It's just yep. nonstop. So I was raised on musicals and love it. I love it. Did a lot of theater growing up. Yep. It's a lot of good well. storytelling and I think it helps, it helps me as a designer that I'm like, oh man, the way that they've communicated that is really interesting how can I translate that to a visual medium? Uh, there's a musical called Band's Visit and the guy's singing and he says the line, my ears are thirsty for your voice. And I was like, whoa, how cool is it to like communicate mixing senses with other senses? Like, how do we do that visually? Yeah. Yeah, we were gonna go see Wicked and then uh, things happened and they canceled it. So ah! we were super bummed. That's my, that super a, bummed. That's my defying gravity. Oh. Sorry, we're we've we've gone off topic, but oh, no, I'm that's, okay with it. This that's is, what this is for. Topic. I, I definitely want to have I could, some point that I plan with the guest that like we get into like a good chunk of a scene or something, but like make it feel like it's genuine dialogue that we're just talking through. <laughs> so he picks up. Like, you can do that with my kids for sure. Oh yeah. I think you actually probably did do that with my kids one time. I was going to say, yeah, I think that we, I know that uh, your son played some Dear Evan Hansen and we sang along. Um, yes. Cats. Yes. I actually like cats. Um, I don't, yeah. I, yeah. Cats is a thing. The, okay. Did you sorry. like, did you like the cinematic? No. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it was terrible. I like okay. the music. Okay. I just want to yeah. make sure you clarified so you can save a little bit of your reputation there. Yes. No, it was terrible. Uh, it made me sad, but the music is. Oh. Cats is. Okay. Whatever. The thing that, that I love about <laughs> cats, and we'll just get it. The, so I don't care about anything in cats except for 
at th- the end of the first song where they're like cats to vaginal cats to cats at the end there's one singer on the original album that like jumps up an octave and all i hear every time is whoever it is just going like like so loud and I laugh every time I listen to it. And so going into the movie, I was like, if they don't have that one person shrieking those high notes and they didn't. And I was like, this is trash. <laughs> That's wow. We got so off off topic. What happened here? Um, so we're designing here on the stream today. <laughs> That's so I hear. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Um, oh, never apologize uh, to for for talking about musicals. So, oh yeah, it's coming along about cats now. Um, all right. Yeah. So let's recap where we are, um, where we're going. We got about 20 minutes left. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's talk about where we are, where we're going. Yeah. So basically, uh, at this point, I'm kind of just incorporating copy in here and making sure that uh, everything fits where it needs to go and uh, making sure that none of my colors are really touching um, and where they do that I'm setting them to overprint for sure so um and is that so what I, for the printer or for you to see uh for the printer mostly but i also have the overprint preview set so that i can see it as well yep yeah for sure uh so basically um i'm just kind of roughing in my type right now one of the things i want to be able to do that's weird i'm not sure why that little fun those little fun characters came in here um Wow. Oh, wow, those, that's interesting. Those are, uh, yeah, formatting marks are pulling in somehow. I wonder yeah. if it's just out of word and pasting it in. Some yeah, kind of probably. Weird formatting thing happening. Yeah, I'm not going to sweat it too much. So here's one of the things I want to be able to do on the back of this package, though, is show how the product works um, so that people can kind of get an idea of it. It's not like this is, you know, aspirin or you know, uh, perfume or something like that. It's not something that people buy every day. Uh, they don't really know how it works. So what I've done is that I've, I've done an illustration, a really simple illustration of the product. And I made sure with the client that I was putting this in the right way. But what I'd like to do is kind of use this space right here to kind of show like, okay, this is how it sticks in the dirt. So this area right here is kind of like underground and this area up here is kind of like over uh, above ground. Yep. Um, so I'm going to basically create a new layer and I'm going to call this illustration and I'm going to paste it in the front. And then I'm basically just going to draw some lines here. So this is going to kind of illustrate the flight line and how it attaches. Yep. And so this is interesting because it's so much more than visual design. Like he's really trying to understand how people are going to use this and how to communicate how to use that. And regardless of how good it looks, if you can't communicate well how this is going to work, then all of this doesn't matter. Um, and so this is the kind of right. stuff that it's like, cool, we can make it look great, but we need to be aware of what the content is and how we are communicating how to use this product and really sell it um, to whoever the consumer is going to be. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Because if it doesn't sell at the end of the day, uh, what's the point, right? Yep. So, um, so here's a little bit of an issue I ran into is I started drawing that line and I'm like, oh shoot, I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna hit these holes where the, where we're putting the zip, the zip tie through. Yep. So what I'm gonna have to do is make an adjustment here on my uh, foundational shapes layer, and I'm just gonna have to pull, see if I can scooch this shape down. What I don't want to do is go too close to the front because I want I, I don't want this part to end up on the front if everything shifts, yep. if that makes sense. So I kind of have to think about, okay, so maybe if I pull this shape down a little bit more on the front, I'm going to have to kind of move some things around to get it where I need it to go. So um, this, this is where a little bit of the thinking being able to think like on all sides of the box and how everything's going to lay out flat is really important. Um, and now I'm running into an issue here. So I'm basically just going to have to make this shape. 
Flogger uh, said that it attaches where I want it. Go ahead. Yep. Oh, I was just going to say, so this is you're almost cheating yourself to make it work better. You're finding right. where can I exploit almost like optical illusions to make it look like it's better, but technically actually be the right thing. Right. Yep. You got to kind of think through on all sides of this thing, like how, how everything's going to align when, when you actually, uh, when it's actually folded up. So I think that's a lot better. Um, I can now see like, this is, this is the part that's supposed to be underground. And now my flight line isn't intersecting this. Yep. So it's a, little, a lot clearer. So I'm just going to bring this to the front believe it is already set to overprint which it is and then i'm gonna add a little round end to this so it kind of looks like that string is rounded and looping in there and then the other part of this is that they have uh, a, a an extension line i'm going to grab and yep, it about 20 minutes until uh, the challenges are due. So about 20 minutes to submit that. Check out the challenge tab right above, um, right? It's up that way. Uh, go check it out up that way um, and submit your challenges. Oh boy, we got the chat like totally into musicals now. That's a lot of the, the chat that's happening. I love it. The SpongeBob musical. SpongeBob musical is actually on Amazon Prime. You can watch it. Um, Ethan Slater is uh, literally the best SpongeBob I've ever seen. Um, so yes, go watch that on Amazon Prime. And then a little bit of High School Musical. I was actually seeing it before we went on as Jeremy and I were prepping for this. Um, he was like, yeah, we'll like do this together or something. And I was like, together, everyone. Uh, so yes, we all the vibes are just so right today. It, it's we're, we're having a good time. So basically going to pull a little loop off of here to kind of show how these two pieces attach. I like very simple diagrams. It just gets the point across without getting people getting stuck in the weeds. Yep. Uh, and so we're going to just kind of show like, this is the flight line that extends between the stakes. This is the loopy piece that connects to the top. Um, I probably would go in if I had some more time, I'm not going to bore you guys with it, but I would probably make this look a little bit more like a loop and not just like an oval. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going to waste any time on that. So, so basically what we're going to do is use this area here to kind of play out how, how all of this stuff works. So I'm going to just pull this copy. I'm going to throw it here. Um, and it's funny because looking at all this, right, that we've done so much, and you're like, oh, man, we got like like 15-ish minutes left. Like, oh, are we going to finish? And it's like the, all the pieces are here. It's just plugging it in. That it ends up being that like all the plans are here. It's just the ditch digging, and it starts to fall into place. And it happened yesterday, too, that all of a sudden it was like, oh, it, it, it's kind of done. Oh. <laughs> uh, no pressure there. Yeah, I know, right? And so that's the, that's the great thing about having the sketches you have about having like the layout and everything that's like cool we know where we're going it's just a matter of time of just trying to kick it out yep so i'm going to basically use this area here to talk about the flight line and then i'm going to pull this you can just ignore all these hieroglyphics that came in i'm not going to mess with that right now take care of that later but i'm going to basically pull this copy in here to um to show like the different attributes of the product. Once again, I'm going to set that type to overprint. Boom. Hey, Lessa, welcome to the stream. Getting in on those vibes. Uh, and coming up after this stream, if you guys want to stick around, um, we will be moving from Jeremy Slagle and Andrew Hawk Rattle to Andrea Hawk, um, not to be confused, uh, doing the Adobe XD challenges. So stick around right after this, and our friend Andrea Hawk uh, will be there. Um, I do feel like she and I need to start some kind of supervillain group uh, because it's so uncanny that anytime I'm scheduled for things, she's right after there, and we're sharing most of our names together. 
I don't know who's the, the evil partner. I think that I would be the evil side because she's way too nice. Like I'm the evil alter, alter ego. Uh, so now that I've kind of got these in sort of in place where I want to where I want to have them, uh, I'm going to use my six sided shape again. And this time I'm actually going to um, make a little a little pointer with it. So I'm going to do this. And then I'm just going to option drag, create a little arrow that kind of matches the rest of the brand and then select both and go into my pathfinder and subtract it. That's magic. And now I've got a little pointer to kind of point out the different features. Get out of here with that sorcery. So let's say that's going to go there. And then this is talking about the foundation line, which is that line over here. So I'm just gonna rotate that. That's so cool that it's it's like, oh, I need an arrow. And then thinking not just like, I'll make an arrow, but thinking, oh, it's literally the shapes that we can use. We can keep those angles, we can adapt that. And then it is a system built on a 30 degree angle, which is really cool. Yeah, yep. I like trying to keep that stuff as consistent, even though people may not recognize it, they may not see it uh, right away. It just, it's definitely subconsciously uh, helps kind of in, continue to embed the, the brand and the, the look into people's yep. minds. So it just feels Oops. right. It's that thing that it's the Don't. client is like, it just feels right. And you're like, it doesn't just feel right. It is very intentionally right, but I'm glad that it feels that way as well. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Absolutely. So basically, I mean, I would spend some extra time here finessing, getting the rag correct on these, getting rid of these hieroglyphics that are that came in with the copy. Um, and then, oh man, I'm getting, keep, I keep doing that. And then uh, let's go ahead and pull. This over, it's kind of our intro copy for the piece. And then I'm going to Go to stash script here. I'm gonna bring this headline down a little bit. Probably make that uppercase. Uh, Lessa asking a question about Pathfinder and Subtract. Um, I think that I can answer this one so you can focus on that. Um, you try to subtract, but it kept this stroke of the bottom shape. How do I subtract basically completely delete the area of the top shape? Um, it will. You can turn off that stroke um, and it will subtract that and then turn the stroke back on if you need to. Um, if you're trying to subtract something with a stroke, it's going to keep that stroke of whatever the object is. And so you could play around with maybe the top object has the stroke and the bottom object doesn't, and it will flip it. Um, just make it so that they're both the same. And when you subtract, it should keep it the same. And yes, try using the Shape Builder tool. Absolutely. That's great advice, Eric. Um, and tune in next week at the Adobe Creative, uh, sorry, Adobe uh, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges. We'll be covering Pathfinder on day three, I believe, on Wednesday next week. So come hang out. I'm not afraid of a shameless plug. Zero percent. Never have been, no, never will be. Never will be. Yeah, so um, I'm going to, I like I said, I'm, there's some stuff that would probably need to be done as far as just finessing some of this type, getting the, the letting and the um, spacing and the, the font size correct to get it to fit all, you know, where it needs to go. But um, I like kind of like when you're using oil paints or, or when you're creating like watercolors or whatever, I like starting with the like really broad, like put the big shapes in and then kind of play with the details till you get them where they need to be. Um, yeah. And it just makes the whole project kind of come together a lot faster. Um, I've got a, my daughter is uh, in in art class right now and she started a painting and she started with all the detail and I'm like, you are going to rue the day you started that way. And yep. sure enough, so, you know, it's always best, you know, whatever you happen to be doing, I find it easiest to, um, to start broad 
and kind of work work your way and then it's just a matter of like finessing the till you get it where you need it to, everything kind of starts to fall into place and yep. sometimes i have to go back to my writer and say hey i've got too much copy here or we need a little extra copy here um and they're always always willing to help uh, and we got about 10 minutes till challenge submissions um jeremy you have a pre-baked version of this right i do okay let's I not do. open it yet uh, I was just checking. Okay. We will go there in a few minutes just so we can take a look at what the final will be. I'll cut to commercial and you can <laughs> secretly pull it out of the oven. Um, but yeah, let's keep going for a little while. And then uh, we're going to hop over there, kind of do a recap of what we've done the last couple days. And then challenge submissions. Make sure you get those in in the next 10 minutes. Uh, Jeremy will be giving you a lot of feedback. We'll go over probably the last three days of submissions. Um, depending on what they look like uh, going through in that uh, challenge. You can drop them in here, bit.ly slash AI Discord, um, and go to the challenge tab and drop your challenge in there if you have not. I had a little uh, illustration of kind of how the, the flight pattern works on this. So I'm just kind of bringing this in, probably beef up that line a little bit. Oh, that makes sense. Um, so it's two stakes with a line between it, and then the bird gets to fly in like an oval. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he can fly to the length of this, and then uh, however far that extension goes out around the edges, he can, he can fly. I feel like this is yeah. uh, how I am now with getting out of the house, that I really only <laughs> walk my block, and somewhere there is like a post in the middle of my neighborhood that keeps me on the same loop every day. <laughs> Yes, it's very similar to uh, shelter in place orders. Yep, but for birds. for birds. That's right. Fly in place. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, uh, let me know when you want me to switch. But I feel yeah. like um, yeah, let's go ahead and have here. you uh, open that in the background. I'm gonna hop over real quick into my browser. Um, and I'll cut to commercial break and you go ahead and pull that up and we'll be back in just a minute. Great. Hey everyone, are you looking for something to do to, this is the commercial break. This is a bit, just, just roll with it everyone. <laughs> Hey everyone, are you looking for something to do tomorrow at 1 p.m.? Come join Nick Longo and Andrew Hockrattle here on Behance.net slash live. Um, you can post your work by tagging hashtag Adobe Office Hours on Twitter, Instagram, or Behance, and we will be doing portfolio reviews with the chance for you to get featured. Thanks so much, and tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. All right, Jeremy, let's take that out of the oven. Um, Look at that. Pulled oh, that puppy wow. right out of the oven. TV magic. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of basically what I've ended up with. Um, uh, the client is currently approving it it has not gone to print yet. This is, this is a real project that's really in the works right now. So, um, that's, that's one of the things that this, the timing of this couldn't have been any better, but kind of gives you an idea of sort of, you know, the process I go through, um, from sketching to layout, I did go through and use the round corner tool to kind of round up some of these corners a little bit. Um, and then before this goes to print, I'll make sure that I kind of trim this extra stuff off. Uh, but yeah, it gives you yep. a pretty good idea. That's awesome. It was funny. I, I am. Yep. I was uh, unintentionally realized last night I was working on my stream on some logo stuff that I was working on and they had the sharp edges and I was like, man, I feel like these need to be rounded. I went through and started rounding them. And then I was like, oh, I think this is literally Jeremy talking about that on the stream that it's just been like sitting in my brain of having those like sharp corners uh, and being able to round them out to kind of soften it up a little bit. Yeah, and I uh, I put some grass in here, but basically I just made some brushes, uh, some scatter brushes of some grass and then just made a couple, couple versions of it that automatically kind of vary the the height and spacing. So when you stack them up next to each other, they create grass. Yep. And uh, let's do a recap. So we have about five minutes before those challenge submissions. Let's recap um, everything that we've done so far on the stream and take a look. Uh, where did we start, Jeremy? Can you kind of walk us through in the next five minutes kind of what we've done the last couple of days if people want to go back that are just joining us um, and kind of watch? Yeah. So uh, basically started with the, the structure, the, the template that gets sent by the manufacturer. Uh, and then I will grab this from here. 
Uh, and then I kind of talked about a little bit about um, how I did some sketches as far as like kind of generally figuring out where things are going to go and, and how things are going to lay out. And then um, started with these kind of foundational shapes, thinking about how things bleed and, and how things are going to have to work as they wrap around to the other sides of the packaging. You know, when you've got a cut line like this, you really need to make sure that this is solid and there's enough room for some wiggle room here. Um, and then just kind of laying in some of the artwork and the copy and showing the product in here and building it out. That's um, crazy seeing your layers sure and how they just dropped in like that. And I'm like, it's so organized. Yeah, and that's the other great reason for using layers is so when you have your chance to be on Adobe Live, you can just kind of do the same thing and just turn them on and off as you as you go. Yep. So uh, make sure that whenever you are placing an image, like you can see this is a bitmap image uh, in a spot color document that it's grayscale or black and white. So then you can assign it a color when you bring it into Illustrator. Otherwise, if it's RGB or CMYK, you cannot assign it a color and it will not separate as a spot color when yep. it goes to print. Uh, and then earlier today, we took the designs that we did yesterday and applied them into a real world uh, photorealistic mock-up, right? Yep. So if you guys sure are did. worried about um, or have been curious about how to do mock-ups, um, you can very easily uh, go into Behance, grab a mock-up, go over to um, uh, Adobe Stock and grab mock-ups and do something like what we did today. Um, by putting the image that we made in Illustrator into a Photoshop document that it's all linked. We can make changes um, and do whatever we want by still keeping that live. Yep, all, all right in here, which I unfortunately didn't save. So <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I, was, I was getting ready to pull it up while you were talking and I'm like, ah, oh, shoot. Yeah, that's so, fine. Anyway. So this is a great mock-up. Um, if you missed it, look at this. You missed it and you need to go back and watch the replay. Um, so you can go and watch that replay um all right jeremy we did it yes. um do we want to hop in and do some challenge reviews i know that we have like three minutes left so you guys can keep dropping let's do them. it um let's hop in let me go ahead and open up discord oh shoot there's weird cool stuff happening today i love that all right let's hop right over uh, let me make sure this is working there we go um and let's hop right into this first one by jay lewis and if you're in chat right now um, and you have done the daily creative challenge, let us know. Um, I'll try to find it and we'll try to look at yours because we love it when you're here. So um, let's look at this one. The challenge here today was, uh, let me read it out to you guys. Design a custom 3D shape using 3D options on the map art panel. Um, so this is very uh, advanced top level kind of illustrator stuff. Um, but we're going to give some feedback and it looks like you're using the revolve tool, um, and some of the other 3d tools, Jeremy, any thoughts here? I love the revolve and 3d tools, by the way, in, yes. in illustrator. You can get so um, weird. yeah, I've used it quite a bit to, uh, to kind of mock stuff up or, or create, you know, shapes similar to this. And it, this, this looks really cool. I especially like, I don't, I'm actually not sure how you did it. Uh, but the, the bottom left one that kind of has like, uh, it almost looks like you did it transparent, but applied a symbol that's semi-transparent. Is that how that's done? So you um, can kind of see through it? Or is it, how do you do that? I've not done that before. I think it's maybe uh, a stroked a stroked object with uh, a gradient as the stroke and then revolved, if that makes sense. So it's probably like an cool. oval that has a gradient stroke on it that then has been revolved. Okay, okay. so it's, he's not applying uh pl applying a symbol to the outside it's interesting it's, it's, it, it's, it's cool. cool yeah i think this is yeah. definitely a cool vibe um and if you're looking i'm going to cut back over you to, stumped me yeah, i know to the browser um a great artist to follow his name is jeremy booth um and he does a lot of work with that revolve tool so he'll create stuff like this um that are like vases and like cool things by using that revolve tool um and doing some mapping on there so if you're practicing um, eventually you can get to a level where you're doing some cool work like this. Um, and again, you can just follow him. Jeremy Booth is his name uh, and he does a lot of cool kind of 3d stuff with what we're looking at uh, today in the challenge. Um, all right, let's keep scrolling on up. 
um, and see who else is in there. Oh, let's look at Desiree's. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it looks like, uh, go ahead. It looks like she extruded, she used the extrude tool to kind of create that bowling pin type shape and then was able to to create the ring kind of going across the top. That's that that takes some extra skills to be able to do that. Um, yeah. But it looks good. It looks it looks nice. It does. And I like the way you've mapped the art. I have the hiccups now. Uh, I like the way that you've mapped the art on the uh, uh, box on the left that it kind of wrap around, wraps around that edge and it has the right perspective. Um, a lot of times the perspective gets super wonky um, and your perspective is totally right, especially with those stripes. Like that could get really mm -hmm. bad really fast uh, and you've kept yeah. it really tight. <clears throat> yeah, it looks great. Great job. Um, all right, continuing on. Oh boy, you know what's about to happen at this one uh, that's above Anthony. Anthony was here in chat yesterday. We looked at his piece. Um, Jeremy, do you want to talk about this first? Because you know what I'm about to talk about. Go ahead. Maybe I do. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it looks, this looks good, Anthony. Um, I would say, you know, my only suggestion on this is that um, whenever you want to draw the eye to the focal point of any painting or drawing, uh, great painters do this, artists do this all the time, photographers, your eye always goes to where the darkest color meets the lightest color in anything. So what is happening here is my eye is being drawn to the background on this instead of the foreground. Yep. So um, one of the things you could do is just change the opacity on the star shapes in the background, the circles, uh, the white ones, just kind of maybe drop the opacity back on that to like 50% or whatever. And it'll really kind of help bring your objects to the foreground and give some dimension to the illustration. Yep. Uh, and I totally agree. And with the segue of space, um, <laughs> Next week on Monday, we're doing daily creative challenges and we're going to space. We're actually going to do a challenge that's a lot like this, where we are going to build planets um, using textures and clipping masks. So a different way other than the 3D revolves um, and we'll be doing scatter brushes to build some stars. So if you want to learn how to maybe level this up and not uh, in a 3D way, uh, come hang out next week. I literally have a bunch of planets uh, hanging behind this green screen that I'm not going to show you yet. Uh, but come hang out next week. We'll be going to space and learning uh, a lot of these techniques. But yeah, I really love the way that you've mapped the art on this as well. Like the wobbly, weirdy curves are just my favorite mm -hmm. thing to see. Yep. Um, looks good. Paul says, my son is using Ed Emberley's book to draw right now. Great recommendation, Jeremy. I love Ed Emberley. You're raising them right. Yep. Uh, all right, so challenge seven, this is something we looked at yesterday, and this is creating a landscape. We're looking at Michael SW right above, um, and this is building a landscape using simple shapes. Um, take it away, Jeremy. Let me pull that up here. Yes. This is looking good. Um, I, I like what you're doing as far as um, keeping the shapes nice and simple so I'm not too distracted um, my eyes not going all over the place on this. And I like that you are avoiding using outlines and you're allowing the different values and colors to kind of define the shapes, yep. which is really, really nice. Um, the one thing I would say on this, and the other thing I do like also is, is you've positioned your focal point, which is the, the skyline in the background in a good place. You're using the rule of thirds. You're kind of putting it at that horizon line, uh, right at the top, the second third, which is really, really great. Um, I would say to maybe work what, what you've done in the foreground it kind of apply some of that to the background as well, where you don't have to use the black lines to define the shapes as much, but you can use the values and the colors to define the shapes of the different buildings and the, and, and everything on it, because it gets a little too busy for me back there. Yep. I agree. It feels like way too much detail, especially because everything else is very flat. Um, mm -hmm. And like Jeremy said, you don't have the strokes. You do have the strokes on the buildings. Um, and yeah. so to me, that just creates a kind of stylistic contrast. Um, yep. And then I also would look at the the scale of things. It feels right-ish. The only thing I'm looking at is the bear, thinking that e that bear is either like really small or really huge. And I don't have like a, my brain can't quite figure out the scale of it. Like looking next to the tree trunk, that thinking that that bear is like half as tall as that tree is terrifying. So maybe the bear goes a little bit smaller. What do you think about the the, the perspective of the bear, Jeremy? Is it yeah, right? I, I would agree. Okay. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. And I think the other thing that's throwing me off a little bit is with the rocks and the mountains on the side. Are those rocks? Are they mountains? 
Um, so you're so just kind of having you're doing a good job by bringing obviously your larger trees in the foreground and your smaller yep. trees as they continue to go back are getting smaller and smaller. So I'm getting that sense of depth, but I'm having a little trouble in the mid area. They're trying to figure out what the scale of that bear is, and I think maybe those rocks are throwing me off just a little bit too because i don't have a sense of the scale of those yep i agree and i i mean i could see these go all the way up and crop out um and have it be like how tall are they actually like don't show the top of the curve just have them keep going up and then crop out in that top left and the top right and that way yep. my imagination will scale everything to what size i think it needs to be mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. the power of imagination oh my goodness all right let's keep scrolling up and look at lady alexandra's Sweet little kitty. <laughs> I love it. And this, I'm a this sucker sorry, for was any... to build uh, animals out of simple shapes. Sorry, go ahead, Jeremy. I'm a sucker for animals made out of simple shapes. So I, I love it. Um, the, the one thing I would say on this is those the whiskers and the detail that's happening in the center there is just drawing my attention a little bit too much to the whiskers. Um, I, you could almost get rid of them completely or instead of making them quite so curly, just kind of make them a little longer. I know uh, Andrew's going to disagree with me on this and he's allowed to, uh, but but I love the, the, the bright eyes on it. And um, and I kind of and I really like the smile and the, the mouth on it. So yep. the when I'm, I'm not seeing the mouth real clearly when you've got quite so many whiskers twisted around there. Yep. Um, and someone asked in chat, Aiken, where is the link for the Behance Discord that I can get into? Jeremy, where is the link? Oh, you're asking the wrong person, but I will try my best to answer that. It's floating above <laughs> us. Uh, you can't oh. see. Um, yes, it is floating above us. This is where you can go um, to get involved uh, with these. And I believe, yep, uh, Mod dropped that in chat. It just makes me happy. Um, all right, so <laughs> I agree. I think that my only feedback with this is if you are using with simple shapes, um, it looks like it's too curvy for me. Like, I would love to see this cat just be like a gumdrop blob. Like, I don't mm -hmm. need the detail of like where the head meets the body and then it kind of yep. curves in on the body. Just make it a gumdrop yep. and it just make it a cute little blob. Um, and I'd yep. be totally fine with that. Yep. Just oh. make that a rectangle and grab those two upper right corners and pull them in. Yep. And you're done. He's a blobby boy. Um, cool. Oh, people are asking about the other Discord channels that I, I have a lot of Discord channels here. Um, this one here is for Creative South. We play video games. Um, and then there is a Behance uh, streaming. That's not uh, that's not one for, that's not one we're gonna look at. Um, cool. <laughs> so I don't know. I have all kinds of things on my screen that I'm like, <laughs> let's not look at that. Um, <laughs> let's scroll up and look at some bears uh, by Kelly Rains. These are really cute. They are. I like it. Look at their I eyes. Like what's happening here. Look at their little eyes. They're definitely in love. They're in love. Oh, but it's like a forbidden love because one is a polar bear and one is a brown bear, and it's like um, they never meet. I was gonna say this is the this is the DreamWorks presents Romeo and Juliet. That's what this is. <laughs> 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 Star-crossed lovers. Exactly, yeah. But he yep. lives in the mountains. I don't care. I still love him. Like, yes. He lives in an iceberg. Yes. Yes. Good stuff. It's full wow. to go in. I think there's a musical lives. here. There is, yes. Um, yes. This is fantastic. I love this so much. Um, and I think your simple shapes are really great. And the way that you've incorporated the gradients into the shapes and you've used the grain, um, which is really great to make them look like that metal. Um, I think this is fantastic the way you've incorporated gradients. Yeah. Yep. Looking good. Booty Val. Yes. Bears, the musical. <laughs> um, all right. Let's keep going. The sequel to Cats. Yes. Um, let's look at some more. Uh, sorry. I'm just scrolling aimlessly. Uh, to, oh. Oh, my. All right. Let's do... Um, flow i scrolled up a little bit the seville uh gothic cathedral uh right below that yes yeah there yeah i see it oh because you can see my screen yes <laughs> i know right uh oh that's pretty i like it so there's really the cathedral pretty. and then we built it out of uh i believe the challenge was simple shapes um if not we're still gonna give you some thoughts on it uh thoughts jeremy i like it um I feel like you, I like it a lot, by the way. Um, I, the shading is really, really nice in it. Um, nice and subtle, it's popping well. 
Um, I feel like a little bit like you've started something that you uh, are have become a little bit of a slave to, and that is feeling like you have to outline everything. Um, and I know we, we might be actually, uh, we might actually be going against something we said earlier, but uh, I would, these background shapes back here, not sure they need to be outlined. Yep. Um, and also your, your, your stroke width is getting so thick that I'm missing some of these. And I think sometimes we try too hard to get every detail when I would say you probably get rid of every other one of the, of the little notches between the two towers and get the essence of the design across. Kind of like you did uh, with the three that are below the tower on the left. You could probably do the same thing at the top there. Just get rid of like, half of those. Um, and in situations where you've, uh, on the, the large tower on the right, where you've got the lines inside the windows, I would just get rid of those completely. Cause it's yep. just, it, my eye is getting too stuck there. Um, and it's the, the shapes are, the, the strokes are combining into like double thick strokes and that's not good. Yep. And I almost would just one, take out every other one and then, uh, change it to the, that darker color, like the shade color that you have. I don't think you need them to yeah. be blue. Just turn it to the shade color and it will really, um, I yeah. think you either need to not outline everything but like make sure that the things that are important are outlined. Um, and yeah. I'm going to get you right here on this spire. It is about four pixels leaning to the left, um, the middle red spire. So make sure that that point is heading at a perfect uh, vertical angle if you're going to do it uh, like the others. Yeah. Overall, this is really pretty. I like it. Yes. Here with those hawk eyes. Um, all right. Let's keep going. Um, hawk eyes. Hawk eyes. I don't know. H O C H eyes. H O C H eyes. Yep. Yes. That's it. Um Oh, let's look at um let's look at the one that is uh Natasha Adler, uh the little farm. It's up above if you want to scroll up a little bit, uh, a little more a little more right there. Oh, cute. Love it. <laughs> Clever four pixels. Yes, it I mean when something is is supposed to be vertical and it's off just a little bit, uh, you can you can notice it. Um, I think. I mean, leading tower pizza, right? This is a great example of using shapes and colors and values to define a shape versus outlining stuff. This is a great Absolutely. example of that she's done a fantastic job. And even uh, the subtle the subtleness of the clouds by just adding a little bit of a of a transition in the color. It just really makes that, makes those clouds come alive. This is really pretty. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, I love what you've done with the grass. That's such a great detail to have like those like mm -hmm. farm rows of the grass. Um, I'm confused what's happening. And I think that what happened was you used the cow shape at one point or yeah, the cow shape at one point to bring it over to where the pig is just for alignment. And it looks like you left the cow hooves on the pig. So the pig has oh, pigs, pigs have hooves, don't they? Oh, hold on. Oh, it's the back. It's the back feet. So it's the, it's the back feet yes. coming. Okay. I thought back he, he feet, had like random. front feet. Yes. Nope. Got it. Okay. I mind. saw it. Whatever I said I was wrong. I think it looks good. Um, when we talked about not <laughs> outlining everything, the top left of the cow that is the best example of like, okay, I'm not gonna outline anything, but I need it here. That you have the black yep. uh, splotch, but then you have that tiny white line to differentiate between his ear and his head. Like that's genius. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Just a little highlight and it brings the character to the foreground. Really smart move. A whole new world. Um, <laughs> all right, let's, um, some feedback. Ooh, cool. Let's look at the custom landscape, uh, simple shapes by Greg Wolf, uh, just above that right there. Ooh, that's cool. I'd wear that on a t-shirt. Yeah, that's rad. Totally. Any thoughts and feedback? Uh, I don't have much negative to say about this at all. This is really, really great. Um, I, I love it. I love the reflection. I love when you can take simple shapes like this and know you can tell exactly what it is uh, just by your color choices, showing how that reflection is kind of going across the ripples in the waves. This is this is really nice. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm not sure if it's just compression or if there is um, two colors of yellow on the reflection. 
um, of the water. I don't need two colors if there are two colors there or if there is a gradient. Like I would just do, yeah. I would be fine with just Straight the yellow because it's really cool to have it simplistic yeah. like that. Um, yeah. Either use gradients or don't use gradients. But yeah. I would say you're right. Like just drop the gradient out of that and just make this nice and simple. I like it. Yep. I also would maybe add one or two clouds um, using what the shapes that you're in the water. I would add like two like light gray clouds kind of up there. Um, just to give you some dimension because you're trying to pull the water having that dimension, having some clouds will help you create that depth, I think. That's rad. I love it. Great job. Yeah, this is nice. Um, let's hop up a little bit. Uh, oh, sure. Let's look at uh, Jenna's. Uh, the uh, palm tree with the sun. This is looking good. I'm getting that cut paper vibe from the way that you're doing the drop shadows on this. Oh yeah. Um, which which is which is a good look for for this. Um, I would say my only feedback on on this would be uh, just kind of think about the scale a little bit. Um, this this the palm tree I think could come almost all the way up to the top and make that kind of the the center focus the focus point of focus on your you're uh drawing the 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 issue i'm having right now is i'm not sure what to look at everything has the same amount of hierarchy the sun and the palm tree and the clouds are all kind of fighting me for my attention so i would take that palm tree and let it kind of bust out of the top you're doing it on the left already but okay maybe have it come and curling up nice and big and let everything else recede a little bit so that you know what the focal point of the drawing is Yep, uh, and if you're looking for, uh, we were talking about gradients a little bit uh, and finding a gradient. If you have not, uh, check out Gradient. Um, maybe it's Gradient. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, it's a project by uh, our friends at Unfold, but it is a great resource to get incredible, amazing gradients. Um, so you can check that out if you're looking for gradients. Uh, somebody dropped it in chat, and so it reminded me, so I wanted to shout it out. Um, it's a really good resource for really good gradients. Uh, they're kind of the master of gradients. I don't have to check that out. Right? It's really cool. I completely forgot about it and someone said it and I was like, oh yeah, that's so cool. Um, yeah, it's funny. I see Jeremy's screen and there's like a tab open. He's like, ooh, yeah. Um, oh yeah, I'm going there now. Yep. Uh, cool. So my feedback on this piece um, of the uh, landscape. Um, I think I love what you've done with the warp and the wobbliness of the sun reflection. Um, the only problem I have is that you can see the sun through the water um like the bottom part of the sun so i'll just clip out the bottom part of like the the full sun and just let the reflection kind of trickle down and i agree making that palm tree huge and if you're gonna break the frame have the palm tree like fully out of the top of the frame like have it just fully break that frame um which could yep. be really cool yeah this is rad i love it um cool we got about seven minutes and um I'm going to scroll down real quick. You stay where you are, Jeremy. Um, I'm going to scroll okay. down real quick. Just see. Okay, cool. So let's hop over and real quick, I'm going to uh, go to my browser just so you can see it. And I want to talk about, oh, dang it, I'm not going to go to my browser. I'm going to go to the main real quick. And I want to talk about kickstand. Jeremy, do you want to tell us a little bit about what this is? We talked about packaging design today, and I wanted to make sure I highlighted something that Jeremy um, has been working on that is a little packaging design and a little product design. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can actually pull it up on my browser if uh, you I want. I got it. Oh, you've got it. Okay, perfect. I got it. So, yeah. So, basically, um, I I am old school. Like, I used to have a big drawing desk that was set at the right angle, and I love to draw. I love my iPad Pro, um, and I just got the new iPad Pro 12.9 uh, about a month ago when it came out, and I immediately started looking for accessories like one does. Um, and I wanted a stand that I could set the iPad Pro on my desk and have it at the right angle for me to draw on. And I also do a lot of work at like coffee shops and stuff. So I also, I, I found some that I really liked, but they were either too heavy, you couldn't put it in your bag, you know, what have you. So I basically designed this uh, called, it's called a kickstand and it's two small acrylic pieces and they're held together by a bicycle tube. You might notice the theme, the bicycle theme in uh, on my website, but and in the name kickstand, where the name kickstand comes from. But basically, it just attaches to both sides of your um, iPad Pro. And if you use Sidecar, 
with Illustrator or Photoshop or whatever, it's great because uh, you can flip it one way and it goes vertical and it works great as a sidecar monitor. And then you can just kind of grab it, grab your Apple Pencil, flip it uh, down to drawing mode and work at a, a nice 18 degree yeah. uh, drawing angle. Uh, angle yeah. yeah and uh the so talking about packaging design today and showing that it's cool that like sometimes the solution is not what we did today that it's like all right let's do like the cut box and whatever that it's like oh the idea is so much more important than the application a lot of times that the idea is like oh it's kickstand let's use a bicycle tube to wrap it up like we don't need some kind of complex whatever that it's about that idea that it can scale to something like we did today that was totally insane like what we're seeing on this screen right that is all these dialogue lines and all this design and all this like craziness but then we fly back and it's a bicycle tube right that it's about the idea and how you apply that that really matters that i think is cool um cool well thanks for sharing that with us jeremy yeah um, all right jeremy do you have any parting words and advice for us um for this stream today um i just say thank you for spending time with us today um it means a lot to to both of us that you are taking your valuable time and doing this um i i started doing design before there was an internet to speak of and <laughs> and all the opportunities that you guys have uh i am that old yes uh so i would just say take advantage of this take advantage of all the opportunities that are out there as far as people willing to give you your time people uh, teaching you things. It's just the internet is a wonderful place yep. for stuff like this and just keep going. Like, don't stop, keep going. Um, you'll look back at stuff you did a year ago, uh, a year from now, you'll look back at what you're working on right now and just be like, man, I've come so far. So just keep learning and, and keep utilizing these opportunities for sure. Yep. Uh, and with those opportunities, I kind of want to go over what's coming up next, uh, both today and then what's coming up uh, later next week so that you guys can get involved and see what is all happening. Um, I'm going to keep talking very slowly because I'm actually looking at the schedule and trying to uh, stall. All right, cool. Um, so <laughs> coming up next, we have... Um, oh, cool. The schedule is right except for one thing. So we're going to hop over here. Um, next up, instead of having Howard Pinsky, we have our friend Andrea Hawk. I know that she's sitting uh, in the waiting room ready to go live. So hi, Andrea. Um, have fun. She will be doing uh, the Daily Creative Challenge for Adobe XD. Then we have our friend um, Kyle T. Webster doing a little draw along. And Voodoo Val is coming up to close out our day. Um, and if you want to hang out on behance.net slash live, there are other live streamers like myself that are live during the nights um, with more content. And then coming up next week, or sorry, coming up tomorrow again, 1 p.m., hashtag Adobe Office Hours to submit your portfolios to get feedback. Um, and next week, daily creative challenges for Illustrator. I'll be hosting you every single day and we'll be going to space. So make sure you stay tuned for those. Um, and chat, yes, like Jeremy said, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, Jeremy, what would be something that is totally out there that we haven't talked about that's a tool or something that you use that people should go Google and look into and be like, Jeremy said this thing, what is this about? And watch YouTube videos about. Do you have anything like that? Oh my gosh, like know, you just totally spot. threw me off. Uh, so totally unrelated to anything Adobe, uh, just going back to my kickstand, like I picked up a Glowforge a couple years ago and I love that thing to death. So if you're ever looking for something that where you can create stuff in Illustrator, um, export it from Illustrator and cut it out of acrylic and wood and do all sorts of cool application stuff, uh, highly recommended uh, picking up a Glowforge. I agree, yep, and uh, really, anything that is an extension of that creativity right that yep. like yep. yes the adobe products are great and we're on the adobe streams yep. and we want to talk about adobe but using those to not be the end all be all that it's like cool i'm gonna use illustrator and do something like a glowforge where i'm laser cutting my design into a yep. leather wallet like it's so cool which laser cutting leather smells so bad um it does yeah it does but and, yeah. and, and it is very illustrator compatible i will say so yep. that's one of the things that is really cool my kids have learned Illustrator specifically because of the Glowforge. It's been a great tool uh, for them to be like, hey, you wanna make something? Create an Illustrator first, and then we can print it out in, in real time, so. That's awesome. Cool, well, yeah. thanks for hanging out today, everybody. Jeremy, thank you so much for the last few days. Um, this was great, and thanks for sharing all of your design secrets with us. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you again sometime. Uh, and everyone cool, else, I'd love that. 
hang out and chat. Um, say hello to Andrea if you're sticking around. Um, when Andrea goes live in about five minutes, um, drop some, uh, let's do uh, yellow hearts in chat if you're hopping over there. Um, so stick around, drop Andrea some yellow hearts. Let her know that Andrew Hawk Rattle is sending love to Andrea Hawk. And we will see you all um, next week. Actually, I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.